Greetings, everyone. This is an old drawing from 2004 that I was thinking about doing a little redraw of for fun, because I haven't been drawing much for myself lately, and I thought it would be a good chance to make an updated video about my drawing process, which people ask about sometimes, and I've been thinking about doing more drawing videos in general, so I, I wanted to, to try out doing one. So what I usually do when I'm going to sketch something is I have this preset that's 11 by 11, 600. I always draw it at least 600 dpi and I, I just like to start out with a square canvas just cuz and then I'll always make a new window I'll keep this one zoomed out while I'm zooming into the main window so that I have plenty of so I can get perspective on what I'm doing and then I'll pull that over there for reference so that's not taking up my main screen and then I'll start my sketch layer and if it was like a comic I would have a thumbnail layer and then a sketch layer, but since it's just a general drawing, it's just going to be one sketch layer probably, unless there was something really difficult I had to work out. And my sketching is pretty much always with these settings, it's just the pencil tool with the opacity set to pen pressure, just like the size, such that, and this is also what I use for inking nowadays, so when I press harder, it's more opaque and also bigger. And that's about it. So. I think this old character was from some story that <laughs> I don't remember the gist of it other than it was very generic shonen shit and the whole idea was that the people all had different powers like you do, but for some reason I decided that the name for people with powers in this story was Grifters, which I, I didn't realize was already, you know, like a word for a completely different concept. <laughs> so, so, oops. And here I'm, I'm just sketching the general shape. I, I should probably change her pose up a bit because the way that she's holding her scythe doesn't really make a lot of sense. But we'll, we'll think about it a bit. As you can see here, I uh, when I'm more confident in the sketch that I'm doing, I tend to kind of go ahead and start blocking out the clothing shapes and stuff rather than drawing all the anatomy under it. Which is more important when I'm not drawing, you know, like silly chibi people. And here I'm, I'm thinking a bit about what I want to do with the pose. See, I think it's more natural if she's got the scythe over her shoulder like this. And then is waving with this arm to go, hey, I'm just a weirdly happy goth girl with the scythe like you do. <laughs> Actually, I do think I'll go ahead and, uh... Hmm, I, I want these legs to be a bit smaller, so I'll just go ahead and transform them. Easy peasy. Then I'll, I'll go ahead and lower the opacity of this and make a new sketch layer. Of course, I just gave her eyes like this in the original. I don't think I want to do that. I'll, I'll give them a bit more detail than that. Do I want to show teeth? Maybe it's a little. I don't know why her bangs look so soggy in the original. <laughs> See, if this was 2004, then I would have been about 14. So that's what, first or second year of high school. So I wasn't a baby, like a baby baby, but I was still pretty small. And this is when I first started uploading things to DeviantArt, not on an account I have anymore, but it, it's pretty crazy to go back and look at things that when I was that young that I was already uploading and you know I'd make posts like yes I got a hundred hits I'm, I'm making it I'm making the big time get some fluffy buns Let me 
the original doesn't have any eyebrows. This one's gonna... Oh, and then the most important thing to do, you gotta save. You gotta save your work. I'm just saving it to my general. I keep a sketch folder for every month that's separate. And I should give things specific names, and sometimes I go back and give them names, but uh, normally I just number them. And now I think her face is a little too tall for the style I want to go for. I always draw the right eye too high, and I've always wondered if that's something that divides left-handed and right-handed people. Because I'm left-handed, and I always draw the right eye too high. And I know everybody always tends to have like a side that they tend to skew a bit higher on. And I wonder what determines that. Like, is it your handedness? Is it your, your brain-sidedness? I don't know, it's a mystery. You can see sometimes I accidentally right-click. <laughs> you just got a fucking jean skirt. Amazing, beautiful, iconic. And some of the details on stuff like this I won't necessarily put in the sketch, because you, you don't need all that. I actually drew a lot of shirts like this back then. I wonder what I was copying. Because, you know, mo most things that I drew back then, most details on clothing were probably copied from something I was playing or watching. I don't know what this one would have come from. It doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> Probably Ragnarok Online. That's where I got everything from. And then of course she has fingerless gloves because I drew everyone with fingerless gloves. <laughs> My fashion icon is Ash from Pokemon. What's going on here with the with the X's? Are these supposed to look like stitches that Mary, what were you doing? I guess I'll do it like this. This is kind of like when you're drawing a commission for someone who, you know, obviously they don't draw a whole lot themselves, so, so the commission has like some kind of weird details that you would see a newer artist doing, and you're never quite sure exactly how accurate to stay to those details, because you want to draw it to look nice, but also obviously you want to stay true to the original design. So sometimes you gotta make a bit of a... a bit of a call there. <laughs> And then for something like sketching the scythe, I feel like the scythe design is almost certainly based on something in Final Fantasy XI, which I played way too much of, and it was very mistakes. But yeah, I put it on its own sketch layer so that I can draw it through, and then I'll be able to erase parts of it or parts of her without, you know, without, without any troubles. Go ahead and ear, ear, ear. Though, now her thumb is kind of going to be making a weird tangent with the scythe itself, so I might. That'll line up better. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'll go ahead and work in the X's over here. The shirt can have the nonsense X's. Pew 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 pew. And to figure out how faithful I want to be to these silly boots.
I was actually watching a video where someone ranked a lot of art YouTubers, and I didn't know who like any of them were, and I was like, shit, I should watch art YouTube. I'm sure there's a lot of like really great process stuff, but I, I, I'm not really interested in watching like time lapses of people drawing. Usually those just end up frustrating me, like, they make it look so simple, but it's not! It's a lie! <laughs> But I'm sure there's a bunch of ones that have uh, interesting commentary and whatnot that I, I should really dig into and learn a few things. So if anyone has artist YouTube suggestions, uh, hit, hit me up with them in the comments. Because I want to see. And then I think we're... <laughs> this is too silly. Oh well, whatever. But I, I think that's good for the sketch, so I go and lower the opacity of the sketch. Oh wait, I'm gonna merge it with this ice layer. Lower the opacity. And I can go ahead and get rid of the thumbnail. Uh, this one sketch. The other sketch is dead to me. And then an inky layer. And then the inks. Like I said, I, I use the same brush nowadays, unless I'm trying to get some other kind of effect. And so I just start going in with the pencil tool. And do some quick inkies. Even back then, I was trying to do that rounded cheek, and I wasn't doing it quite right. And so the shape of it's a little weird, but I always wanted to have cute rounded cheek faces. So yeah, while I'm sketching this, I'm constantly looking over to the right at that extra window that I have open that shows the zoomed out version so I can get a good sense of how it looks overall, because otherwise I would be constantly zooming in and out which is something I end up doing anytime I'm forced to draw with only a single screen nowadays. You can always tell how confident I am in a drawing because the sketch will be a bit looser like this and less detailed when I'm really struggling with a sketch like in a particularly difficult panel of Sleepless Domain. The sketch will be much more detailed, much more short lines, much messier because uh, and, and it's such a strange thing, you know, it's all this weird mental gymnastics. Like if I could just force myself to sketch loose and confidently like this. It's the, the end result is almost always better, but sometimes it, it, if you're just not feeling it or you don't quite know how to make a pose work, you just can't put yourself in that place mentally. And it's very strange. The psychological aspect of drawing anything is weirdly complicated and frustrating sometimes, <laughs> especially as someone who you know does it for a living and has to do a certain level of output. Finding the balance for these kind of cartoony hands between, you know, like how far apart you want to put the fingers and how splayed you want to make them. Be a little difficult. I think they're a little too far apart here. Actually, meow, 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 meow. You, you nudge over right there. There we go. Oh 
make sure that this line doesn't line up with this line to create a tangent. Gotta keep track of that kind of stuff. It's like, do I want to give her more implied arm anatomy? Yeah, that's pretty good. I used to, for the longest time, I would draw all sleeves like this. And, and then there would be like this black void here. And, and I wanted to do all sleeves and all shorts like that. You can see that in early Kiwi Blitz. I think I, I wanted it to be like video games. Where they were just like this stiff model, and then there isn't even any model of their legs or arms inside of it. <laughs> I don't know why. And then for, for stuff like this that I do want to be black, I'll go ahead and select it, and then I'll hit my action, that's F11. That expands the selection and fills it with my foreground color, which in this case is black. I definitely want to do some videos, and I'm sure they're already out there, uh, about basic Photoshop stuff like tolerance and what contiguous means and whatnot, but specifically targeted at comic artists, because that's definitely the kind of thing that I still get a lot of questions about, and part of me is like, oh, I should probably go like find YouTube videos that cover this kind of stuff and explain it well, and another part of me is like, maybe I should just fucking make my own. <laughs> so if there's anything in general like that that you'd like to see from me, just let me know. <laughs> sure. And a lot of times I'll just go ahead and use the selection. Oh wait, I don't want to anything. So that I can do things like this where I draw behind something without, you know, having to erase part of it later or whatever. hitting control s every once in a while just kind of instinctively which is very important i've gotten much better about doing that you kind of have to train yourself too photoshop does have an auto save function but it's betrayed me every once in a while every once in a while it will recover whatever i was using for reference but not recover the actual file that i'd been spending hours on and it's like cool thanks for the help shoops I used to do those, you know, straight stick legs, but for a long time I've much preferred stuff like this where there's some implied anatomy. Not not a lot of anatomy, but a touch of anatomy. Good enough.
I don't know why I'm why I'm saving the eyes for so late in the game. Let's get these peepers in here. I'm gonna go ahead and keep them black. Just do it like that. It's a cheaty way I do it sometimes when I'm doing a quicker drawing. just doodled out. This one I actually passed me who was doing the sketch left inking me to figure out more of it than I usually like to. <laughs> what the heck me from 15 minutes ago. And then I have to make the all important decision of do I want to draw nails? <laughs> Which I do sometimes depending on if I feel like they're needed for something or if they would be too detailed for the style that I'm drawing in. Not perfect, <laughs> but I'll take it. Alright, so then I got the inks. And I might go back and, and do a little like thicken up these inks to create a little more depth between what's in front and what's behind. And then, so for flatting, wait, move her down a little bit. <laughs> so I'll create a layer below the inks called flats. And then here's where I, I have to do something a bit unusual because as many of you will know, if you fill, depending on your settings with, with inks like this, it, it ain't gonna look good because it won't go behind the lines. So the solution I've happened upon for that is, I'll start with one of the darker colors that I'm going to be flatting. So this will be the, the flat color for her shirt kind of area. And then I will select around everything and delete it. And that way I know that there's no gaps in my flats. Everything, there's no other, yep. And I go and lock transparency. And choose the rest of my colors. As you can see, I'm mostly just eyeballing. Oh, but I gotta turn my... Now I'm just using the regular pencil tool with no opacity. It's important that the flats are all consistent colors. I'll just go in with the white pencil. Put these back here. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop. I like how I just kind of have a weird soft gradient inside of her mouth in the old picture. I was like, I don't even want to deal with what's going on in there. Tongue, what's that? I guess this is brown hair. That's the color it is in the original. Well, this looks like a little, like dirty blonde or auburn or something. And there you can see, so just to make sure that I filled it in right, I made a quick lasso there and then filled it. Because the hair especially has a lot of faded areas, so I need to make sure it has a nice solid fill behind it. Got her big ol' scythe. And then and the downside of inking like this is I do occasionally have to like kind of go in and touch up these areas. That they don't look like the wrong color. Though honestly, depending on how important the drawing is, it, it might not matter. They aren't very noticeable. But if I want it to be cleaner, like for my comic, 
it's worth checking. And now it looks like these are... Yeah, they're all brown in the original, but I think it looks better like this. Her, her consistent colors. I also make her gloves and boots brown. Maybe a bit more grayish brown, less saturated. Of course, her hair is a pretty saturated brown. In fact, I might want to pull from that, get a closer color. That feels a little more unified. Do the selecty thing again, get my brown. And how do I want to do this? Then, hmm, wait, actually, these might be. Yeah. So it's, it's all about balance. Now, see if I wanted to maybe make these a little more tan. Because now I'm thinking. Wow. Hmm. Kind of unify it in general a bit more. Alright, and now that I'm happy with my flat colors, I think, yeah, I'll go ahead and create a new layer for shades. And for drawings like this, I will go ahead and create a clipping mask so that the shades cannot go outside the flats. So if you're not familiar with a, what a clipping mask does, basically, now if I draw on this layer, it, it can't go out the outside of the layer that it's locked to. Which is very useful for things like this where there's a, you know, character floating in space. That's more saturated than I want. I'm picking my multiply shade color. Yeah. Now shading nowadays I do with a very weird mix of tools that are sometimes confusing to people. And, and I'll make and delete selections super on the fly. So like, for this boot, I'm like, okay, this part I'll just go ahead and do by via selection. And then maybe I'll clean it up a bit with the pencil tool, if, if there's an area that I selected a bit wrong or whatnot. Or it doesn't have quite the feeling that I want it to in terms of depth. And then for this leg, I might create a selection, control H to hide it, and then do some shadings. And then I'm gonna go ahead and shade this leg at a lower opacity just in general to help push it to the background. Deciding exactly how I want to shape the shadow on this, actually. So there, I went ahead and selected all the blue flats so I can mess around with the pencil tool on top of them. It's one of these cases where I'm probably getting too nitpicky about exactly how I want it to look. That's probably fine. Whatever.
And then for stuff like the hair, sometimes I'll just go ahead and go in and fill it all with the shading color. And then I'll come in either with the eraser or with white, which is, you know, basically the same as erasing on a multiply layer. And basically erase away the shadow. So that tends to help with creating that kind of sharp bang shadow. And for something like the scythe, I might go ahead and use a darker shadow color to stress. That's like a heavier, more metallic thing. This feels right. Alright, I think that's all the shades. Boop, 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 boop. Looks pretty shady. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. And then, usually I'll actually switch between doing shades and highlights on the fly, but highlight layer set to screen, and I always put that over the shadows. 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 I do my ever-present nose and cheek highlights. There it is. I, I didn't shade this part. Alright. And you know what? She, she's kind of blushy in the original. I, I, I should keep a little of that. Why not? Pretty cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and select so I can draw the highlights on her hair, which I keep switching up exactly how I do highlights lately. I should probably have some highlights on it. I usually highlight with the same color that I, uh, as what I'm highlighting, depending. Yeah. I actually do a few. Uh, kind of highlight, make it look a little shiny, Pew. And then bam, I guess actually it was good to go. I'm not going to recreate this ridiculous background. Oh, but this, this little cat that I did. I, for a while I signed things like this because um, it's actually my initials as a little cat, which is funny because I used to not actually even like cats. I, w I was a dyed-in-the-wool dog person. So maybe I should bring that signature back now that I'm a cat person. But see, it's like M, E, C, and, and then the periods, and it makes a little cat. <laughs> so you know what? Yeah, I should go ahead and sign this picture like that. Young me knew somewhere deep in her heart that she would one day be a crazy cat lady. I just had to 
discover that for myself. And, and there she be! So, so, <laughs> so what do you think? You know what? I'm looking at this old one. I, I am liking how it has the thick outline on it. I do think that looks very distinctive. So I want to try... Sick. Go ahead and adding a stroke to the flats of this one to create a thicker, thicker highlight there. A real thick highlight. Do I like that more? Probably a little too much. Yeah. So bam, 2004 versus 2020. It's, take that, baby me. I'm better at drawing than you. I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> but this kind of thing is fun to do sometimes, just to reassure yourself that you have progressed as an artist. Especially, I mean, I would freaking hope so, since I was just a little baby when I drew this. But I hope that was fun or interesting or educational to watch. Uh, again, let, let me know some good art YouTubers that I should be watching. And let me know if there's anything else specific that you'd like me to make a video about. Uh, bye!